What are some important qualities do you think as a, uh, a strength and conditioning coach who wants to work in not just AFL but elite sport? Yeah. Um, I mean, first and foremost, knowing your stuff is pretty important and seeking you know, education, seeking answers, as I've talked about before. But for me, it's you know, leading, doing the doing the dirty stuff still, like putting cones out, those sorts of things. That's stuff I pride myself on as a, a leader still is doing that sort of stuff. I'm not, I'm someone who still takes warm ups and, and I'll take the speed work and share that with another staff member, but I like to get my hands dirty still. I think that's a good way to lead. Um, but balance, you know, the serious stuff versus the fun stuff's really, really important this day and age. Um, I'm not taking things too seriously, but getting the job done. Um, you know, it can be at work from five till seven at night if you want to be, but at the end of the day, you know, quality over quantity for me is the most important thing. What are some important cues to recognise, do you think, uh, as you've got more experience where you're like, oh, I've, I've got to, yeah, that what I've done today, I've, I've maximised and now I need to get home and be with the kids or, you know, move on <laughs> to the next day. <laughs> I usually find out when it's too late because I'm that gone that I've realised what am I doing? I need to find a balance again here. Um, or my wife will remind me of it pretty quickly anyway. Um, yeah, just oh, look, usually sleep or lack of sleep um, is a big indicator and just, yeah, those sorts of things, I guess. I, I, I know myself when I've gone too far or when I'm too obsessed with work or gone too far with it. Um, mm -hmm. But I've gotten better as I've gotten older and, and more expensive. I had the kids as well, which helps. But yeah, usually usually it's just general fatigue and, and lack of sleep. You're not sleeping well. And if you're not sleeping well, there's something not right. For team dynamics, like as a high performance manager, what do you think the sort of key roles are to help with team success? Like what are your sort of killer, your key pillars, I guess, to make the greatest impact on the yeah on the club? Yeah, I think I've touched on it before about cohesive, cohesiveness in your department. You know, there's a lot of staff working across uh, fitness departments, medical departments. There's a lot of people, um, everyone knowing their role um, and playing their role, but at the same time, you know, bringing them all together and working together, sharing ideas, uh, listening. Listening to people is really important. Uh, listening to your staff, um, listening to everyone, getting everyone involved, having an opinion. One, one thing that was really good at Richmond in the coaching staff there is, you know, as a, as a fitness guy in amongst 10 coaches, because the people in this role, high performance role, they, they probably spend more time with the coaching group than even their own fitness and medical team. What are some sort of common, um, uh, I guess, educational sort of part ways that you like to give on the first year players on getting a better read of their body and and understanding that they yeah, the work capacity that it takes of going through your first preseason. What are your sort of key areas of focus, I guess, for, for the younger players getting those habits in place? Yeah, habits, just education, really around when to eat. You know, how much protein. When timing, timing is everything. Um, volume, you know, volumes of foods on on training days versus non training days. Um, hydration. Yeah, timing of food in particular. Um, you know, we don't really talk about supplements with with younger players, um, you know, we want to do it through through eating to start with. Um, but just yeah, just education around nutrition. I've got a fantastic dietitian out at, at the Hawks. Had a fantastic dietitian at my time at Richmond as well. Learned a lot from uh, from them. What are some some other tips that you would have for strength and conditioning coaches looking to make themselves as as best they possibly can uh, and make a real impact in elite sport? Um, yeah, the, there's just so much information out there at the moment, um, through research podcasts, blogs, there's so much out there, you know, going out and educating yourself is very, very important, but it's also just important to just take it all in and sift through it and work out what you think is really relevant versus what isn't, um, cause you can't do everything. And some, you know, sometimes the simplest keep it simple theory still stands up um yeah it's it's trial and error and you know i've made plenty of errors and we'll continue to make errors but it's learning from those and reviewing yourself reviewing what you what you're doing what works well what maybe you didn't think worked 